Hello students, today we are going to learn a poetry, an elementary school classroom in a slum by Stephen Spender. Students, when we see the title closely, we find there is a school in slum area. Okay, there is a primary school, elementary means primary, okay. There is a primary school in slum area which is very positive thing which has happened in our society. But the question is, the education that they are receiving in the school, is it beneficial for their future or they are just wasting their time here? We will learn that in the poetry through the words of Stephen Spender. But before that, let us know a few things about the poet himself. Stephen Spender was born on 28 February 1909 and died on 16th July 1995. He was an English modern poet, novelist and essayist as well. And in his work we find social injustice and class struggle as main theme. The same is here in this poetry as well and he calls himself a socialist and pacifist. Socialist means the one who prefers social and economic equality and pacifist means the one who promotes peace who loves peace okay and let us see the last point about the poet he had witnessed uh, two wars that is first world war and second world war and its repercussions that is results consequences Therefore, he expresses intense search for harmony and synthesis between the apparently warring claims of visionary and a man of action. It means the person who is preaching, they should practice what they preach as well. Students, now we will learn the poem line wise. Students, the first theme of the poem is the condition of the children and the theme of social injustice and inequalities. Okay, the condition of the children which is very pathetic in the classroom and social injustice. They are in that pathetic classroom. It is because of social injustice and inequality. The next point is need of holistic education. Only bookish knowledge is not going to benefit them. The students must be allowed to play. They must be allowed to nurture the hidden talent they have in them. Students, the last point talks about the difficulties faced by the underprivileged children. Number one, in that is malnutrition. Number two, education of course. And third one is opportunities for these slum dwellers. Next is message of the poem. An appeal to the educated and affluent sections of society to better the lot of slum children whose only hope is education. This point we have learned in Lost Spring as well that none of the places can work without laborer and rich people. Rich people are rich because of poor people right but poor people are neglected of their basic facility basic right and that is education so it is the duty of a richer and educated section of our society to look after them and better their life students second point talks about lost spring of children during this phase during their childhood they should enjoy uh, pleasure they should enjoy games, they should enjoy nature, but they are deprived of all these opportunities. The last message of the poet is that we human beings should have human quality first. We should be compassionate about others. We should be hurt by looking at the pain of others. Then only we can uplift their life. Okay, And not only we human beings, but the government as well need to act proactively in order to uplift their life, uplift small children's life. Let's look at the 
structure of the poem and it is written in blank verse or free verse because there is no rhymic scheme in the poem let's read out first four lines and then we will move towards the explanation far far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn around their pallor the tall girl with her weight down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the stunted unlucky ear students the children of the slums are referred to here their pale faces are deprived of the cheerfulness and enthusiasm which mark the childhood days okay instead of having bubbling life they seem to be worn out and exhausted with their burden the expression a uh, far far from gusty waves signifies that instead of enjoying their childhood in the lap of nature frisking freely in the open grounds and the uh, open field their childhood is confined to the dark and dingy walls of the slum here in second line like rootless weeds the comparison has been drawn with the weak looking undernourished faces of the children you must have seen students the weeds weeds are unwanted plants and just like weeds these children are also unwanted in the society they are unfit for society there is no belongingness it is because they don't contribute for the society all right therefore they are very uh, looked down upon by the society in this phrase the hair torn around their pallor it means their worn out faces are covered by their unkempt hair that means uncombed hair scattered like rootless weeds okay they don't have time to look after their own health and hygiene therefore they are so untidy students the tall girl in the classroom is burdened by the load of poverty and the trials and tribulations of life she is so much suppressed that her body and her head have been bowed down with the burden of misfortunes the children who are in the classroom have become as thin as paper it is because of malnutrition all right and it is happening because of their penury because of their perpetual poverty in in this line the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the poet compares the eyes of the boy to those of a rat because the poor undernourished child is deprived of the basic amenities of his life his eyes are so inquisitive and timid like the eyes of a rat are he is always on the lookout for food and security let's move towards next lines the stunted unlucky ear of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of a squirrel's game in the tree room other than this students a thin slum boy has been referred out here he is stunted his growth is stopped okay stunted means to stop all right his growth is stunted his growth is stopped because of malnutrition and the poet calls this child unlucky ear unlucky successor it is because they are not inheriting these children are not in power or property from their parents but they are inheriting disease despair and poverty and uh, when he recites his lesson from the desk his voice is so tender his voice is so soft and weak okay it sounds very sickly just like 
a energyless person okay just like a diseased person just like a patient he recites the lesson okay it is because he has inherited his father's nal disease there is no spirit there is no enthusiasm in his voice or actions and in that very classroom we find a child who is unnoted it is because of ill lit classroom this also shows that the atmosphere the ambience of the classroom was not conducive for teaching learning process it was dull which added to the despair of children this little child this young little boy was different from others it is because he is lost in his world of his dreams he is in his imagination world he is imagining something okay and what he imagines he creates a fantastic world where he plays and he is very energetic out there he is playing just like a squirrel in the tree room you must have seen squirrel students who is very energetic okay squirrel is very energetic very quickly it moves inside the hole okay and very quickly with you know great energy it revolves around us if you find them so the same kind of classroom he wants the little boy wants but the situation in the classroom is totally contrast to that the dull and monotonous lessons makes him so bored that he wants to escape from that situation and create a classroom which is full of activity students right now in our school there are so many things cal smart class etc even then students are very weak in learning imagine about these slum children without any amenities how they are trying to learn let's move to the next line now on sar cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized doom riding all cities here we learn that the classroom of the elementary school has not been maintained properly the pale cream walls which must have been painted very long ago with you know some donated money by politicians or some social worker all right it creates very sad atmosphere and in a corner stands a portrait or bust of shakespeare or painting of shakespeare and uh, it is so ironical that the lessons that they are learning does not have anything to do with shakespeare shakespeare's portrait should be housed in a classroom where there is serious teaching going on but here it is totally opposite the children of slums perhaps can never taste the joy of literature similarly there is a picture of beautiful valley full of fragrant flowers the children can never experience their fragrance and beauty since they are condemned to life of slum the entire atmosphere in the classroom is one of the uh, one of inactivity and uh, morbidity which contrasts with the cloudless sky at dawn and the concrete dooms which overrides the cities these children will never see the natural beauty because of concrete structures around them let me read out few more lines belled flowery tyrolus valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all their futures painted with a fog students the expression belled flowery tyrolus valley represents natural beauty and uh, this valley is in austria the slum children pass much of their time in rummaging garbage and working somewhere other other 
because of which they hardly enjoy natural beauty they are deprived of beauty of mountains and flowery valleys therefore the poet says the window and not the map okay the window from window what they can see they can see the slum and that slum is their reality and not the things which are shown in the picture of the wall the tyrolis valley shakespeare's bond uh, big cities city buildings okay and the map all these four things are not in their life and uh, students the map of the world which is in the classroom it is symbolic of hopes and aspirations for a uh, look at it motivates the children to explore the huge world beyond the world which has been awarded by god with all its bounties but the world for these children comprises the filthy slum their hopes for a better world may never ever be fulfilled students when there is a fog in the environment we won't be able to see the road ahead or the things which are in front of us in the same way the children are not able to see their future their vision is blurred okay because of which they are very much unclear about their upcoming days let's move to the other lines now the life of these slum children are confined in the narrow streets of the slums where dirt and filth reign supreme right these children lead a life of disease and despair within these narrow streets and their future is just like a leaden sky okay which is dull dark and heavy this lead sky is uh, symbolic of hopelessness and despair the clean blue sky means hopes okay whereas leaden sky means monotonous life of slum area these children are away from rivers which represent adventure these children are away from capes which represents the world beyond okay then star of words which which shows education so the things that children require they are away from it they are very much aloof from it let me read out other lines surely shakespeare is wicked and the map is a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal now students shakespeare is regarded as wicked out here it is because there is no relevance of shakespeare's portrait in the classroom therefore it seems that he is mocking at slum children okay because they won't ever be uh, able to read him all right because their education is so much limited that they won't be able to read the work of a great literary figure all right and uh, next is it creates a fake hope and aspiration all right and the map which is there in the classroom is also a bad example because it does not show their slum area all right the map is full of sun which means light of education ships modern development and love warmth okay which they have never received from their parents society or anyone else let's move to next lines for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night on their slag heap these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel the poet says the lives of these slum children cleverly turn and twist in their cramped holes the slum children spent entire life striving and struggling for their sustenance in small dirty rooms where life seems to be slither and slog throughout their life they struggle they survive and they die that is their history students in this line 
that is from fog to endless night the writer describes the miserable and pathetic lives of the slum children okay from foggy mornings till late at night these children make desperate attempts to live their life but at last they get in their hand misery hopelessness and sufferings it means morning or the brighter phase of life is never going to reach them ever and the students slag heap refers to a large pile of waste materials we know that okay but here even slum children they spend their entire life there in the garbage and they have become so unwanted okay unfit i told you and there is no belongingness of these children they are like garbage discarded by society and because these children are undernourished their body has become so thin and bones are literally peeping out of their body and let's move to the next line of steel with mended glass it shows the slum children's life is shattered and broken like bits of bottles on a stone because they are deprived of the necessities of their life and the foggy filthy slums which comprise the world of the slum children are living nightmares okay life there is worse than death these slums are stalking the world just like death stalks its victims any time and any where unless governor inspector visitor the map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs students in the poem the poet says the primary schools in the slums exist merely for the name sake and we know that we agree to that right because the education that they get there is not at par and they are poor in infrastructure with hardly any teaching or administrative staff to take care of them these schools spring into life only when a governor an inspector or a visitor comes to visit the school the map is symbolic of the world beyond but the slum children are never able to become a part of this beautiful world and have their hopes and aspirations fulfilled ever the open handed map is their classroom only shows them glimpses of the world in that very classroom all the pictures are there which they will never ever be able to enjoy their lives have become just like a catacomb you must have seen catacomb i'll show you the picture also students there is no way from where the light can enter okay so it shows that there is no ray of hope in their life their life is just like a catacomb you can see in the picture their lives has become a catacomb where no light can enter children should be moved from this filth to nature let's read out other lines break or oh break open till they break the town and show the children green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues students the poet hopes that these children would one day break free from the chains of the society they will rise above all atrocities and economic injustice and will create a beautiful world for themselves the poet also visualizes a world which is free for these children they will be able to get access of green fields and they can do things in a carefree manner the words like green fields and gold sand symbolize carefree and happy life it refers to a world where social and economic injustice does not prevail and everyone enjoys the right to live a happy life run naked into books the white and green leaves open history is theirs 
whose language is the sun student sun is symbolic of the grace and light of god therefore here it refers to the light of education the poet strongly feels that it is education which transforms the world of slum children students the poet says white and green leaves are equally important both are equally important because white leaves suggest books and green leaves suggest nature so nature plays role in uplifting our health and education uplifting our culture socio economic status as well let's understand the last line properly that is history is theirs whose language is the sun one can make a mark in history if uh, only one outshines others right one has to outshine one has to you know shine brighter than others and glow like the sun people who have the courage and the vision to break free from the constraints of life are the ones who create history great men are not different people but they do things differently and to educate them we need to take the charge we need to teach um, our slum children so that they can excel in their education and they can uplift their economical status as well with education they can prosper in life and we must do that in order to uplift our country as well students let's have a look at the literary devices that the poet has utilized in the poem the first one is simile and we know simile is a comparison between two distinctly different things with the help of like and as and the first example is like rootless weeds it describes the coarse untidy and uncombed hair of the slum children the use of rootless weeds suggests that the children lack proper nutrition that is why they are fragile next one is like bottle bits on stones this shows that just like bottle bits their life has also shattered they are disintegrated third simile is like catacombs the slum children dwell in dark and dingy rooms which resemble catacombs the windows of these rooms look like the lids of catacombs the last one is slums as big as doom slums where life is worse than death it is like living in a hell students let's move towards another literary device that is metaphor and we know metaphor is comparison of quality action all right so here we find in rats eyes the metaphor is suggestive of boys timidity and anxiety next is father's gnarled disease the boy's father is suffering from rheumatism or a deliberating disease that has left his body crooked the quality of the boy's life has been severely affected by the father's handicap the next one is squirrel's game the boy also wants to play like squirrel but cannot he must sit in the dull and dreary classroom he cannot enjoy and actively participate in games like squirrel next is tree room which is in the boy's imagination full of curiosity and mystery it is such a contrast to the gloomy classroom let's move to the next one students futures painted with a fog just as fog blurs one's view in winters the slum children's future is blurred by hopelessness and lack of empathy second last is lead sky the sky is normally bright and blue but the lead sky suggests dark and dull sky just as the base metal is the in other words there is no hope for the slum children the last one is students spectacles of steel students on the face of it the expression seems to suggest that some slum children are wearing spectacles made of steel and having shattered chipped 
or a scratch glass but more particularly it suggests rigid inhuman indifferent and callous attitude of the government officials who fail to notice the plight of slum children they are myopic in their outlook as if the glasses they are wearing are shattered or heavily scratched so at last i'd like to say that it is a request from stephen spender that we should be involved in understanding and uh, being empathetic towards the children of slum who are deprived of all the basic necessities students in value based questions you can add points from lost spring as well by this we have completed our poem thank you